Hello folks, how are you all? You're all very, very welcome here this evening to eat us. Um, thank you so much for all, all of you coming out. It's wonderful to see such a crowd here. Um, I'm going to hand you over in a moment to, uh, to uh, Tommy here, who's going to say a few words. But first, uh, just from myself, um, I've known Glenn a good few years. Um, I don't think there's anyone in Blaney who Glenn would be a stranger to. Um, he's always been at sports events, community events, uh, shows here, always taking pictures. And, um, and I'm delighted that we, we, have, we were able to display him in here at the moment. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was in London. I was in uh, the, the Tate Modern in London, one of the, considered one of the best art galleries in the world. And they had, a, they had a giant big photograph in their photographic section. And it was huge, it was about four meters high by six meters wide. And it was actually a really close up picture of the surface of the ocean. And you could see all the little waves and the troughs and the ripples and everything. And the point that they were trying to make with this picture is that photography does something which the human can't do, which is freeze time. And uh, how I like to think of it is it captures moments. Um, you know, you wouldn't be able to see all the little ripples in the ocean because it's too chaotic, it's too mad, unless you froze it dead still. And that's uh, the magic of photography um, and, and, and the things it can do. And, uh, and it can also make things look different to how they might look otherwise. Like that picture of the ocean looked like a mountain range because of all the little things and it just goes on and on and on forever. But um, having a look at Glenn's exhibition over the last few days, it has just shown that it's a very, very apt description of what Glenn has done with his art form. He has captured amazing moments, whether they're chaotic moments like sports events or traffic or a bus in town, or if they're really slow, gentle moments like the sunrise coming up over, the, over a hill, or a lovely frosty morning, which Glenn was telling me he had to sit up all night to get some of his pictures as well. Um, so uh, I, I think that's, that's, that really is a testament to Glenn and, the, um, and the, the effort that he puts in and the passion that he has for his art form as well. Um, I know uh, uh, one, thing that, um, one thing that a lot of uh, photographers can do is they can take pictures of they can take pictures of the Eiffel Tower, they can take pictures of something here or something there. What Glenn has chosen to do is take pictures of us, of our place, of our people and of our community, and I think that's just wonderful. So please get that. Thank you. Now, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Tommy here. Tommy. Funny enough, David, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> so, uh, no, just uh, just to welcome everybody here, and I you know probably probably people better qualified to speak to Glenn than me, but. Just to welcome everybody, and I think it's important that there is a big crowd here uh, for this official uh, opening of his exhibition because I think you know it's a, it's also a, a recognition of the work that he does. Apart from the fact that we're here to look at his lovely photographs, um, I, I suppose I didn't really know Glenn until maybe I suppose the early 2000s when he was in goals for uh, County Monaghan, and uh, probably never forgive him for the two goals. He let pass against Armagh that time, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't really, as, uh, as I say, I didn't know. And then eventually uh, we, we heard that our word came out that uh, Paddy McQuillan, Paddy McQuillan's granddaughter, was coming out with this Glenn Murphy path. So uh, and then we got to know. So myself and Tiki right out me one time and said that they were thinking of moving out to from and the rest is history. They're my neighbours now, and no better neighbours could you have. So. Uh, I think I got a, a good insight to Glenn from, from those years as a neighbour, but even going in and out of the house, um, no matter what room you move from one room to the other, the wall was adorned with photographs, and photographs of the children and uh, Holland and Donington and Canis. And I suppose you, you, got a, you got a sense at that stage that Glenn had a, had a great eye for, for photography and it was something that I picked up on and we then asked him at, at different times to come into the Enterprise Centre to do uh, photography lessons or give courses in digital photography. So, and, and again, he excelled in that, and, the, and, the, and he knew that from the, the, the people that turned up that were there for, for the experience of the secret and, and, and learned from the experience that Glenn had. Um, I suppose we, that we, we have to acknowledge that over the years, and as, as, as David alluded to, he, like Glenn has been at, at everything that has happened in the last nearly, I suppose you could say, 20 years. And, 
he's been at hurling matches, he's been at football matches, he's been at Mogi matches, he's been at ladies football. Um, and like he has a vast collection of photographs and and I suppose you have to acknowledge the equality in that that he didn't you know he he's he, he's fair and equal in, in all the representations of photographs that he took. Um, and I think that even those clubs, those football clubs of Orlan and, and Camogie, you know, that they can they have those collection of photographs for years to come um, and that's a big legacy. The other, I suppose, important thing was from Optomania. Glenn and Tiki come on the Optomania Festival Committee and uh, I think it was after a few glass of wine to my house, Tiki, one night, was it? But anyway, um, very quickly, Glenn was going around Optomania the weekends and he was taking photographs and really, you know, he captured the whole essence of Optomania and the whole weekend. and. Uh, every year we'd be doing the program book, we'd go to them and we'd say, oh, we're looking a few photographs for the program book, and you get four or five discs with hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and <laughs> say, this is how we're going to through all these. But like that, you know, we have those photographs now as a Mokomania Festival, and we have those photographs. They're there, and we will have them forever, and, and it's great. Um, and, you know, as, as, as David said, you know, even even some of the photographs that we look for, and I know Martin, the printer, is doing the program book, but the one that he looks for is for all the kids to sit in the front row watching the magician or watching a, a street performer, and, and, and he has captured the faces, he's captured the smiles, the laughs, and that. And I think, you know, that's that's something special that he, he, he's picked that out, and he's picked that photograph, and then in turn, uh, and Martin then has also picked up on that as well. Um, I, I know I'm not, I'm not going to go on much more, but you know I have to say that um, you know uh, we, I suppose, we're very, very, I suppose, privileged to have Glenn in the community. Very privileged to have him taking photographs, and his 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 commitment and his, and his dedication to that his, his which is an amateur, uh, as I said, and I think an amateur photography. It is a hobby, you know. So people collect butterflies or follow butterflies or stamps, but I'd be good at that. But Glenn is brilliant at taking photographs, and that's his hobby. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's something that we, we should, we should, should uh, recognise, you know, that we all have hobbies, but are, are we as good as Glenn at, at, at his hobby? And I think that has to be acknowledged. <laughs> The other thing is um, just looking at the photographs and some of the, the, the iconic figures like Big Tom and the, the, you know you have the cards and you have the lady in the uh, so, so he's also honed in on the whole drama, the parenting as well, and after that. Uh, and, and again, they're, they're, they're wonderful photographs to have for years to come. And um, I always think uh, about Mincenti um, Finnegan um, has the, the park called after him down there. So. You know, there's very few people that still living that you know um, has has something called after them. Uh, um, you know, somebody that's still living, um, but you know, Glenn's still living, and we have all these photographs, and we're going to have them long after he's gone as well. So well done. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words, Tommy. <laughs> If your neighbour couldn't do that, then nobody could. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, God, jeez, I didn't realise there was many people here. <laughs> um, thanks to me and everybody for coming out. Jesus, I can't believe it. Looking up here now, um, that so many of you have come. I'm sure you have better things to be doing than coming here tonight, but thanks to me. Um, first of all, I have a few thank yous that I want to do before um, I get into things. I want to thank Darren, first of all, the manager here in Antis. Uh, it was Darren's idea to um, to make this thing happen, and it took a bit of persuading and a few nights in Dramatic to talk me into doing it. So I want to thank Darren for pushing me and making me do it. Thank you, Darren. Second of all, is David here? Uh, he's the arts director here in uh, Antis, and again, I want to thank him for his um, experience and guidance this last couple of weeks and. You know, tell me what needs to be done and how it needs to be done, and then coming here yesterday with 32 frames to hang and level. And you know, only for you, I wouldn't be there. I'd be still here doing it. So thanks, Megan, for helping me with all that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, next I want to thank, there's three boys there of mine, Canis, Dunnick and Ollen running around. I want to thank them for getting rid of their football jerseys and putting on their t-shirt today. <laughs> there's a couple of rows in the house today trying to decide what they're wearing. But, uh, thanks for looking after it. Be there, all right? Um, and then there's Tiki, I want to thank Tiki for putting up with me this 22 or 3 years, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> Like, there's times when, you know, we'd be at home and next thing I'd to just drop all in no matter what we're doing, to go to a football match or go somewhere to take photographs. So I want to thank you and the boys for putting up with me for all that there. And, like, there's even mornings, like, you know, taking it like waking up and she'd look beside the bed and I'd be gone. Maybe like, three or four o'clock in the morning I'd to come for somewhere to get a sunrise or get some sort of photograph. Like, so thanks for putting up for that. So I got the interesting photographs made probably when I was very young, like you know, I used to steal this my mother here actually, Mary, Mary I, used to, I used to steal her little film camera way back years ago and go out and take photographs and race photographs and now maybe wondering where all these black photographs were coming out like no, there was nothing in them like no, so I really like you know, so that's the agenda I realised that I, I wanted to you know, push things on and get a better camera, like, you know, so I progressed with better, better cameras and was able to experiment a wee bit more with photography. And I think it was then when we had to go to San Francisco, bought my first digital camera in 1998, I think it was, and that just pushed everything on for me and, you know, I really got into my hobby then, like, and this is really what I wanted to get into. So, pushing on 20 years and this is where I'm at now, like, you know, my first exhibit. And the other side, so I'm very excited about all that. Um, the photography probably came from, as you can see, all the brothers here with cameras in their hands. Like, you know, we were always never too far away from cameras from home, whether we video weddings or whatever, like, you know. But I always had this feel for still photography and just loved that idea of taking photographs. And again, eventually it developed into that there. And, and that's again where I got all we go for, for photography. Um, in trying to put this whole thing together, I probably had to go through literally millions of photographs over the last 20 years. I've about 10 hard drives at home with thousands and thousands of photographs, so it took me weeks and weeks to go through them all to try and pick out what people would like to see um, up on the walls here. So that's probably the hardest part of all this here, just picking out those photographs and whittling them down to maybe about 100 to 3 or 4 weeks ago and then trying to pick out of that, like, you know, so there's a lot of good photographs that aren't here, like, no, but maybe they're going to be left for another day, hopefully. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I tried to get a, a sample of photographs from all the different genres that I would have taken, like there's sport, there's drama, there's landscapes, and a bit of everything, like, you know, so I'm sure there's something that everybody likes up at all here, like, you know, uh, and I'm very happy at that, like, you know. Um, just in relation to the photographs, you'll see a QR code beside the photograph. So um, it's just to let you know that if you scan that with your phone, it should pop up. The photograph should pop up on your phone, and it'll tell you a wee bit more details about the phone, about the photograph, uh, to give you a wee bit of an in-depth um, knowledge into the actual photograph itself. Um, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. I'm not really one for speaking, but. Um, yeah, so I'm just basically delighted to see the photographs when they're printed and put up on the wall. Like, you know, you'd be sick looking at photographs when they're on the computer and, you know, they're, they're dead when they're on, the, on, the, on, the, on your phone or when they're on your, your computer screen at home. It's just brilliant to see them printed and up and framed where they should be on the wall for everybody to see and everybody to enjoy. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. Then, sorry, another thing here. I just want to thank the printers. They're Diamond uh, Printers Monon. Do fabulous work, brilliant quality in print, so I want to thank them. Uh, and then also LM Framing in Middletown, so I give them a week club. Um, so LM Framing in Middletown have done all the, the hard work in getting the frames together, so I want to thank both them for all their work. All their work. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm delighted to present you with this photographic exhibit of Focus. Greg was saying there's not too many any photographs that are in focus, so it's good to pick out 32 or 33 that are in focus, I know, so, um, so yeah, so hopefully you enjoy it, and it's going to be up here for the next five or six weeks, like, so, you know, tell all your friends and neighbours to come and have a wee look at it, and hopefully, uh, you know, they might enjoy what they're seeing. All right? So, uh,
Thanks very much, Len. So um, don't forget, folks, there's, there's, uh, there's food over there. Grab yourself a glass of wine and grab yourself a sheet, an uh, information sheet if you haven't already got one. And please browse the photos and enjoy them. Uh, that's what you're here for tonight, so, so have a great evening. And, and just finally, just on behalf of myself and Inkless, I just want to say, Len, thank you very much for, for uh, sharing these incredible images with us. It really is something special. And as you said, it's, uh, it's, it, it's so interesting to see the place and the people we know so well from a completely different angle. So thank you very much and have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen.